Seth, we're both at this FQXI conference in Banff, this beautiful area, um, about the physics of events, the importance of events and understanding what physics is. And one of the topics that we're looking at is the uh, nature of time and how events can help us understand what time really is. How, how does that work? H how can events help us understand what time is? Well, an event is something that unfolds in time, like a clock ticking or uh, an electron moving from here to there or a bit flipping in a computer or, you know, just our thoughts moving on and our conversation progressing. Um, now, time is a mysterious thing and we don't understand it well. You know, Heraclitus said that time is like a river, like this yeah, beautiful yeah, river yeah, here, yeah. <clears throat> the water flowing and then time ever moving onward. And um, uh, but what makes us feel and perceive that time is going? Um, so uh, the first answer is I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> almost every question is the same. <laughs> yeah, um, but but there are uh, different arrows of time. There's a perceptual arrow of time where we don't know something and then we don't know something that we didn't know. This is about getting information. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a conversation, talking back and forth, interacting, where where you tell me some information, I get the information, I tell you something, you get the information. We both completely fail to comprehend each other, but that's cool, <laughs> that's normal. <laughs> um, then there's a second law of thermodynamics, which says that entropy, which is a form of information, tends to increase. Which is disorder. Yeah, it's yeah. a kind of disorder. This is related to the idea of an event in quantum mechanics, because in quantum mechanics, an event can be uh, thought of as something where you know, an electron moves from here to there, or there's an interaction with the environment, the interaction kind of randomizes what happens, decoheres what happens, as, mm -hmm. it, as it said. And, and then this adds a little bit of randomness into the system, and it makes something happen. You know, suddenly an electron was here and there at the same time, now it's either here or mm. there. That can be considered an event mm. in quantum mechanics. So to, to understand time though, there, I, I, I perceive there are two different ways of thinking about it. One is that the events, as you say, sequence occur in time. Uh -huh. The other way to think about it uh, is that there is no time. There's just an event and then another event. And we call that time, but it's not really time. Uh, <laughs> so uh, is this and, and people get really angry, uh, you know, in an intellectual way about both which position they're, they're for. Is time real? In other words, events occurring in time or is time an illusion or something artificial or emergent or coming out of uh, other things that 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 and, and that and that the real reality are, are events. Time is a derivative of events. Now, is this uh, a, a distinction without a difference, or is there something fundamental here? I can answer that question in one word, Robert, and the <laughs> word is whatever. <laughs> no, well, you're, but you're, that's you're, a significant no, point. It is a significant point. Yeah. If it's whatever, that's important. But most people say it's not whatever. Most people say no. either side is is a, is a fundamental. What is <clears throat> because time is such a fundamental part of the uh, of, of existence. So um, uh, the other position, which from ancient Greek philosopher Paracelsus said, time is laid out all for once, nothing is fixed, nothing happens. And this, of course, is the position in Einstein's theory of general relativity, where space and time are a manifold and all the events are laid out in time once and for all. And, you know, they're just sitting there. And then, of course, we experience things as changing because we're moving through time, but it's all just, all these events are just, just sitting like you're there moving altogether. through space, that you're moving through this space time. Yeah four-dimensional block universe, so to speak. Yeah. And that's a very deterministic, uh, it's, uh, you know, if somebody dies, they're, they're still there in part of this system, as Einstein supposedly said to uh, the wife of a friend who died. I understand that, but... It, it's it, not a big consolation, frankly. Yeah. I mean, oh, God, Einstein, God, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but I, 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 I always wonder, is this, is this just literary metaphor or is there a real ontological, a deep meaning and deep structure in terms of the positions about time? Well, look, the Heraclitan and Paracelsian points of view, they sound very different, but they are equivalent to each other in terms of our experience. One and being flow and one being it's all, it, it's, it's all there all the time. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. That, there, you know, 
they describe the same situation in different fashions. They're equivalent to each other from an empirical fashion. So, so that's why so, I said- so, so Is that right? You can't get, you can't do measurements, you can't do experiments that can distinguish between the two. Is that what you just sure, said? Sure, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Like, like let's suppose we think of, of a Heraclitan view of, of general relativity, where we think of time flowing like a river from the past to the future. And then we are riding along this river, experiencing what's going on. And we compare that to the Einstein picture is that the whole history of the river is just laid out. And, and we're traveling through it as, as traveling through we space. We experience it the same way. So we're, my feeling is whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like there, you can t pick this picture, the Einsteinian picture, the Paracelsian picture, you can pick the Heraclitian picture, and they're equivalent in terms of our experience. Uh, okay, that's that. I, I think I, I, I would agree with that, but I think you're missing a, a deep fundamental reality. I mean, I want to know what's, what's below it. I mean, it's whatever for uh, whether in terms of experiments or our personal lives or going to the movie. Certainly agree. But I, I want to know what deep reality is all about. You mean I I, I can't know? That's why that's you why are the I'm talking to you. Well, Robert, that's why you are the host of a, a show called Closer to Truth because you want to find this deep underlying reality. That's why reality. I'm coming to you in this beautiful setting. I could just be looking at the environment instead of talking. I want to learn. What if I were to tell you there is no deeper underlying reality? That if we have two equivalent pictures of what's going on, they're both equally real. Would that be upsetting to you? Well, it would be, if that were the truth, it doesn't matter whether it's upsetting or not. At a meta level, I'd be, I'd be happy that if that's reality, that there's this uncertainty, I, I would then still ask, is the uncertainty in, in an epistemological and knowledge sense, or is it an uncertainty at a deep reality ontological sense? Look, if, if um, from the perspective of physics, if I have two pictures, you know, two theories, physical theories, one in which time flows and one in which time is static, but they give the same empirical content, yeah, yeah, yeah. you cannot distinguish between them. They're both equally good. Well, why do your colleagues fight so much about this? Well, because I don't know, they need something to do in the <laughs> afternoon. They got to justify their jobs. I don't know. Um, no, I think actually people are, you know, the, the, some people like the kind of river flowing, being sitting by this river and yeah. so beautiful and flowing. But I happen to be a Heraclitan at yeah. the moment. I'm gonna, <laughs> going to go with the flow here. Um, some people like the everything is just laid out in a static uh, position for all time, like the Einstein picture. Um, you know, some people just have a feeling that they prefer this rather than another, but that's just a preference. You know, the, the, the two are equivalent to each other. So from the, the perspective of science, they're the same.